Solo Sikoa finally turns on Roman Reigns, Big E returns after 451 days, Vince McMahon makes a big error with Edge Styles, Rhea Ripley, the next big thing, the Usos move on after Bloodline Fiasco on SmackDown, Jey Uso not happy with Jimmy's getting over and more. Let's jump right into it. Big E returns after 451 days. On tonight's WWE Raw, Matt Riddle will be squaring up against an undisclosed opponent in the Money in the Bank qualifier. There'll be a golden chance for the original bro to inch closer to getting a title shot. Speculations are rife about his rival, with names of Ludwig Kaiser and Finn Balor in the mix, but a former world champion's theorized return has taken the wrestling world by storm. A few days ago, world heavyweight champion Seth Rollins issued an open challenge on Twitter. He gave a shout out to Big E, the last world champion, to defend his title in such a manner. The New Day member commented on the post. Subsequently, countless fans backed him to accept the challenge or even compete at the money in the bank qualifiers to eventually win the briefcase and dethrone Rollins. Big E was last seen on the March 11 episode of SmackDown last year. Can he return to fight Matt Riddle and add himself to the money in the bank proceedings? Unfortunately, the answer is a no based on his latest injury report. The former world champion claimed that his bones aren't completely healed. He also needs more time gearing up for a return to wrestling action. The former WWE champion suffered fractures to his C1 vertebrae during an outside-the-ring spot. He underwent scans during the one-year mark of his injury. The powerhouse of positivity revealed more about his neck issues on the Battleground podcast in April 2023. It's just a complicated fracture. I broke my C1 in two places. Jefferson fracture. It just takes a little bit more time to heal, said Big E. I feel great. I have no function issues, no pain issues. I've been at the gym since two weeks after I broke my neck. I'm just feeling great. It's just obviously your neck has to be in a certain condition to deal with the rigors of being in the ring. A surreal comeback again against Matt Riddle on WWE Raw has been ruled out. However, Big E may not be done with wrestling yet. He hinted at a retirement earlier this year, but subsequent reports claim that the New Day member has been pitched for a rivalry with Imperium upon return. One of the reasons why Matt Riddle and Big E haven't locked horns is that both are top card babyfaces. They have either teamed or fought in multi-man matches. Both superstars are also mainstays of separate brands, with Riddle being on Raw since the 2020 draft and E being mostly stuck to SmackDown from 2017. This could change in the future though. Big E is expected to join his New Day teammates, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods, who are now on WWE Raw. Meanwhile, fans are insisting on Matt Riddle's heel turn as it will give him the license to show his brutal MMA nature on Raw. Vince McMahon makes a big error with Edge style. Jim Cornette believes that Vince McMahon made an error on the final Raw of May. While reviewing the May 29 episode on his show, Jim Cornette's drive through with co-host the great Brian Last, he claimed that McMahon's decision to put a top SmackDown star on Raw was a bad one. He was referring to the fact that AJ Styles appeared on the Raw after Night of Champions 2023, while he came out to congratulate Seth Rollins for beating him and becoming the World Heavyweight Champion. He also competed alongside his old rival in the main event against the Judgment Day's Finn Balor and Damian Priest. He told the great Brian last on the show that Vince McMahon was reportedly the one who decided to put AJ Styles on Raw despite being a SmackDown star. Jim Cornette feels like this decision devalued the WWE draft that happened mere weeks earlier. Wait a minute, there's the matter of the draft and the fact that AJ Styles is not supposed to be here. But then they come back and Adam Pearce and he says, yes sir, yes sir. And he hooks the tag team match for later even though AJ is on SmackDown and he can't be on Raw. And by yes sir, one would think, because we've also heard it reported that it was a Vince McMahon call. So Vince called him and said, put AJ on the show, and blew up their draft in two weeks. Jim Cornette's relationship with Vince McMahon was an interesting one. When asked about it, this is what WWE Hall of Famer Jim Ross had to say on the Grilling Jar podcast, Contentious. I don't know that Corny's relationship with Vince has ever changed. They never got along great, but I think Corny had respect for the business, therefore Vince got some of that respect as well for what he had built in WWE, creating an environment where a lot of people, like Cornette, myself, and others, could make a living in the things we love to do, and that was work in pro wrestling. Ultimately, business is business, and Cornette's WWE Hall of Fame appearance a few years ago proves that differences can sometimes be overlooked. Rhea Ripley, the next big thing. Judging by her recent activity on social media, Rhea Ripley seems thrilled with being called the next big thing, a nickname previously given to Brock Lesnar. The Beast Incarnate made his massive debut on the main roster in the spring of 2002. He quickly established himself as a force to be reckoned with and put down superstars one after the other over a span of several months. Back then, the young gun was dubbed the next big thing. Tonight, WD presented a live event in Manchester Annex. At the show, Rhea Ripley defended her SmackDown Women's Championship against Natalia in a singles match. The Eradicator picked up another win over the WWE veteran tonight and successfully retained her title in the process. Pro wrestling interviewer Steve Fall took to Twitter to share a picture of Ripley from the event and called her the next big thing. Brock Lesnar was put against mid-card acts on WWE TV on a weekly basis upon his arrival on the main roster. Before long, however, 
WB pitted him against big names like the Hardy Boys, Rob Van Dam, Ric Flair, and Hulk Hogan. By the time SummerSlam 2002 came around, Lesnar had become the number one contender for The Rock's undisputed WWE title. Lesnar defeated the Great One at the biggest party of the summer to become the youngest WWE champion in the history of the promotion. Mere months later, Brock Lesnar won the very first Royal Rumble match that he participated in and went on the headline WrestleMania XIX against Kurt Angle. He beat Angle that night to win the WWE Championship for the second time in his career. What do you think? Does the nickname, the next big thing, suit Rhea Ripley? The Usos move on after Bloodline fiasco on SmackDown. WWE SmackDown almost saw the collapse of the Bloodline as a faction when Roman Reigns confronted Jimmy Uso finally after Night of Champions. Today, Jimmy and Jay Uso have competed less than two days after the faction almost collapsed. Jimmy Uso betrayed Reigns at Night of Champion, costing him the tag titles against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. This week on SmackDown, there was a confrontation where everyone appeared to take Jimmy's side, including Solo Psycho. Jimmy told Reigns that he had treated them badly and that things needed to change. It appeared that Reigns agreed and hugged him while emotional, but it was leading to a betrayal again. Reigns turned away from him and Solo Psycho hit him with a Samoan spike from the back. While Jimmy Uso is not officially out of the bloodline, things don't look too good for him. Jay sat in the ring cradling his brother while Reigns told Heyman that he knew that Jay would also fall in line. Now less than two days removed from these events, Jimmy and Jay Uso competed against the Brawling Brutes. Thankfully for them, it got a big win, with them hitting Butch with the double super kick followed by the 1D to pick up the win. Jimmy Uso got the pinfall. Things seemed to be okay with the two brothers for now at least, although there was some tension. Now fans will have to wait until the next SmackDown to see how all of this plays out. Former WWE manager Dutch Mantel also had praise for the bloodline. On the latest episode of Smack Talk, Mantel commended Triple H's team for being extremely patient with the bloodline saga. Very, very good segment. Paul Heyman had very little to say because there was nothing for him to say anyway. Had he said anything, it would not have helped it. But I applaud WWE on taking the slow by the numbers, adding just a little bit of the story, and doing a good job. Great job. The factions certainly have everyone's attention at the moment. Do you think Jey Uso will turn his back on his brother? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Jey Uso not happy with Jimmy's getting over. Bloodline member Jey Uso was present at WWE Manchester this weekend for a big match. The Usos faced off against the Brawling Brutes with Jimmy and Jay teaming up after the rather unfortunate ending to WWE SmackDown this week. WWE SmackDown saw what looked like the Bloodline on the verge of utter collapse. After Jimmy Uso betrayed Roman Reigns at Night of Champions and hit him with a super kick, fans were waiting with bated breath to see what would be next for them when SmackDown came along. As expected, things were very tense on the blue brand. The Usos confronted Reigns with Jimmy shoving the tribal chief at one point. He begged the champion to see reason, see the fact that they were brothers, and how that was what mattered the most. He brought up that Reigns had not treated any of them well as the tribal chief. It ended after Reigns ordered Solo Sikho, who had pretended to side with Yuso to hit Jimmy. With Jimmy taken out, Jay was left cradling his brother while Reigns left the ring, telling Paul Heyman that Jay would eventually fall in line. Now at a WWE event in Manchester this weekend, Jay Yuso was photographed. There were a lot of Let's Go Jimmy chants during their match against the Brawling Brutes, according to Steve Fall, who was present at the event. Jay apparently didn't like the chance for his brother and made a face, something which may be understandable after the recent events. It remains to be seen what's next for Jimmy Uso, and if he will remain a member of the Bloodline following the events on SmackDown. How do you see the conflict within the Bloodline playing out? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Solo Sicko further pledges his loyalty to Roman Reigns. Solo Sicko further confirmed his support for Roman Reigns a few days after the explosive events of SmackDown. On Friday's episode of SmackDown, Reigns celebrated his 1,000-day reign as champion by hoisting the newly designed undisputed WWE Universal Championship. He also discussed what happened at Night of Champion, where Jimmy Uso kicked him twice, costing him and Solo Sicko the undisputed WWE Tag Team titles. Jimmy tried to reconcile with the bloodline, but the tribal chief was not having any of it. Solo went on to attack his brother as Jey Uso looked on in shock. It cemented Sicko's loyalty to Reigns as the bloodline becomes officially divided. The street champion recently posted on Twitter to further pledge his support to the tribal chief and the bloodline. It showed him Reigns and Paul Heyman in the ring without the Uso. The bloodline storyline has picked up steam again after what happened at Night of Champions. Reigns' comments about Jey Uso before SmackDown went off the air added yet another layer to one of the greatest stories WWE has told in recent years. Roman Reigns has carried both the WWE and Universal Universal Championship belts since WrestleMania 38, although he usually allows Paul Heyman to hold them in his stead. Reign celebrated reaching 1,000 days as champion on SmackDown and Triple H presented him with a new title. Triple H unveiled the undisputed WWE Universal Championship, which combined both of Reign's belts into one. It's essentially the same design, but is gold-colored and filled with diamonds. Some fans might not like the design, but WWE finally has two world titles again. Raw has the World Heavyweight Championship held by Seth Rollins, while Reigns is the undisputed WWE 
Universal Champion on SmackDown. Do you like the new undisputed WWE Universal Championship or do you prefer Roman Reigns carrying two belts? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Solo Sicko finally turns on Roman Reigns. The recently concluded edition of SmackDown saw Roman Reigns celebrate 1,000 days as WWE Universal Champion. However, the Tribal Chief was interrupted by the Usos. The former undisputed tag team champions confronted Reigns before Jimmy got involved in a war of words with the head of the table. The segment saw Solo Sicko double cross the Usos to side with Roman Reigns. The Enforcer leveled Jimmy Uso with a devastating Simone spike, much to the shock of fans. While Solo might have sided with Reigns last night, he could potentially turn on the tribal chief if his father Rikishi makes his return to the Stanford-based company. The Hall of Famer teased his potential involvement in the Bloodline storyline following the events of Night of Champions. While there were speculations that he could show up on SmackDown to sort things out between the Usos and Reigns, that didn't happen. However, he could make his potential return shortly to play a key role in the Bloodline saga. The 57-year-old legend could open his son's eyes to Roman's manipulation and atrocities, leaving him to turn on the tribal chief. Rikishi could have a hand in uniting his three sons to wage war against Roman Reigns. Wrestling veteran Tommy Dreamer believes that Solo Sicko could be the one to end Roman Reigns dominating Reign as the undisputed WWE Universal Champion. Speaking on Busted Open Radio, Dreamer stated that Solo could do the unthinkable and defeat the head of the table if WWE gives him a umaga s push. If Solo is the heater, everybody should be afraid to piss off the heater, Dreamer said. Just let him be him. Solo isn't there yet, but Solo will be ready. I've gone on record and said I don't know who is the person to defeat Roman Reigns, but what if it was Solo? I think WWE could get him this high. Hot. Like Umaga, Umaga was so hot that if he would have turned babyface, the sky would have been the limit. Do you think Solo Sicko would turn on Roman Reigns? Should the Enforcer be the one to dethrone the Tribal Chief? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I, I, I can feel the blood creeping up from the heathens. Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason. If they want to go eat, then you know I'm going to feed them. If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon. I got eyes in the back of my head I'm seeing. Take me 